Yeah, so let's talk about that because the, the next one here that I want to tell you is to make sure that you have a device, a hardware device. And I recommend the cold card for sure. But there's other there's other good ones out there. I think there's the seed signer. I think there's the Blockstream Jade. But if you're somebody who has like a Trezor or a Ledger, I would strongly consider looking into a different option than that. And, you know, we've seen these wallets. This is what we're going to expect in these in the next decade here. We're going to get a lot of attacks. And that's going to be attack on exchanges. That's going to be attacks on wallets like we've seen. Samurai, Phoenix, uh, Wallet of Satoshi. And we're going to see attacks on devices, companies who are making hardware devices. I really think that they're going to start blocking these hardware devices from coming into countries. And before that happens, you have to make sure that you have one. So I usually tell people once you get to like 1 million sats or 2 million sats, that's when you can look into getting a hardware device. But I would say if the, if you are somebody in Bitcoin, regardless of how much Bitcoin you have, I would get yourself a device today. And keep in mind here, the, the quote of today's show is the real protest is taking Bitcoin into self-custody. So with that, <clears throat> with that device, what I would be doing is I might even get two of them. And the comment here, King says Blockstream Jade is nice and simple. That's kind of what you want, especially if you're somebody who's newer into Bitcoin. You want something that's nice and simple. There's also the BitKey from Block, which is Jack Dorsey's company. That's something that I would look into getting if you're somebody who just doesn't want any sort of responsibility. Because essentially, you'd, you'd have to really screw things up to lose your Bitcoin with BitKey. So if you are somebody who's not really comfortable in Bitcoin yet, but still wants to make sure that whatever Bitcoin you do have, you're going to have in five years from now, I would look into the BitKey device, which looks like a little rock kind of. And basically how that works is you hold one of the keys and then there's two other, uh, what would you call them? Custodians, I guess, that hold keys on your behalf. So if you did happen to lose your private key, you could still unlock it by connecting the other two. So it's a two or three multi-signature. And even if something happens to your device or your backup phrase, you can still access that Bitcoin. So the trade-off there, everything has trade-offs. The trade-off there is that you're trusting those other two custodians that Block uses to hold your keys. And if they did collude, if things went south, there is a chance that they could take your Bitcoin. So, you know, even going back to this comment here, probably the best thing you can do, honestly, is just diversify yourself. Diversify the devices that you're using, diversify the exchanges that you're using, and diversify the wallets that you're using. And kind of what I suggested on the Living in the Future show that we did on Friday was you should maybe think about taking like, look at your, just take a look at your Bitcoin stack. And say that you take 20% of that stack and move it into like a cold card, a separate one, or just even like a spare wallet. You get those 12 words, you memorize those 12 words. Maybe you bury your steel plate in the yard somewhere. And that's kind of like your, your nuclear option there. So if everything, if everything went to shit, you're still going to have those, um, those sats. And one thing you could do is you could do that with your non KYC sats. Put them into a wallet like that, memorize the key, put it out in the yard. And so if somebody ever did come to your house, whether they're breaking into it or they're the government, you still have that 20% there that's, you know, you're going to have regardless. And if something were to happen to you, like let's say that you got hit by a bus or whatever that is, or you got brain damage and you forgot your private key and you forgot where you put it. It's still only 20% of your stack. So you, you kind of have to manage your personal risk, your personal situation and figure out a plan from that. But th the thing is, is that you just have to have a plan in place. Because I think the last thing you want to be doing right now is just kind of going through the motions here and hoping that nothing happens to you. Hoping nobody breaks into your house. Hoping your house doesn't catch on fire. Hoping that the government doesn't flip a switch and all of a sudden they're coming after us. Because if you're just hoping that's going to happen, that's how you set yourself up for disaster. So de I definitely wouldn't advise somebody doing that with like all their Bitcoin, trying to memorize that private key 
and hiding it somewhere because I don't know. I, there's just so much that can go wrong with that. Even if something were to happen to you and nobody else knows where that is, that's a problem for your family. So just make sure that you get a device. Make sure you get a device. Make sure you order it before things really start to, to clamp down here on Bitcoiners because it's going to happen. And you don't want to be a, on the, the side of that who's waiting for their device to show up and it just keeps getting seized at the border. We're not there yet, but it's probably going to come because that's what they're that's what they're going to do. They they can't stop Bitcoin. They're not even going to try to stop Bitcoin because they can't. And these people aren't dumb. So what they're going to do is they're going to make sure that whatever Bitcoin is out there, they're going to be they want to track it. So they don't want people using self custody. They don't want people using non KYC options. They want to know where all the Bitcoin is, who owns it, whenever you move it. That's not what Bitcoin was designed to do, though. So you, ha you have to do this yourself. And the one thing I would say is like if you if you own Bitcoin right now and you bought it through a KYC exchange, which I'm guessing would be 99.9% .9 of people, you're already on a list by whoever. Whoever's making lists, you're on that list, right? So just accept that and now start putting in measures within your own setup that's going to counteract anything that could happen to you.